So yeah, I was just going to run through a quick um, brief and overview of what to think about when you're starting to jump with a camera. Um, so the first thing we're going to run through is the requirements that you need to go jumping with a camera. You need a C, um, Class C certificate um, and DZSO approval. Um, once you've got those, um, we can chuck some cameras on and have some fun. So the first thing, obviously, to carry a camera is something to put it on. So we've got a helmet here. Um, and you're going to need a safe, secure mounting for your camera. So this here is an ideal um, fixture for a helmet. We've got a Cookie Fuel with a roller mount. You can get these roller mounts direct from Cookie, um, from their website or from your retailers around Australia as well. Um, there are also the stick-on clips that you can get straight from GoPro. Um, please check with your drop zone or your DZSO um, if they're acceptable in your drop zone. Some drop zones do, some drop zones don't. Um, they've got extra snag hazards included. So there's a range of 3D printed mounts you can get as well. Um, again, just check with your drop zone as to whether they're suitable. Um, some of them are great, some have different snag hazards. So the more snag hazards we can um, mitigate, the better. These roller mounts are great. Um, they're designed that nothing can get caught on the front. Um, so that's our next point, is to talk uh, about snag hazards. So snag hazards um, are in not less than ideal situation if we're deploying. You get line twists, the risers come across, and you get lines stuck under your camera. Um, so the roll mounts are great, um, but obviously it still does create a snag hazard that we just need to be aware of, particularly on deployment um, and the different disciplines that we're running. Um, again, talk to your DZO if you need more instruction um, on snag hazards, but one that we should definitely, at this point of our skydiving career, be well aware of. Um, a really good feature to have to think about whether you want in your helmet, which I would highly recommend, is a cutaway system. Um, so this helmet here does have a cutaway system, this little tag here, that if you do have something snagged on your helmet and you can't get it off and you need to release your helmet, you're better off losing your helmet than your head, um, you can pull this tab and it will cut away the connection system for the helmet. Um, you can get them for all helmets, you can have them custom made if yours doesn't have one. So your fuels, your G3s, G4s, G35s, uh, your Tom flies, there's all um, cutaway systems you can have made for them. So. Um, want to seriously consider, again, check with you do that, so whether it's a requirement of your drop zone, um, but a really great feature to have on board. Particularly if you're flying a lot of camera, if you've got DSLRs um, or large cameras mounted on your head, the cutaway is a must. Um, the other hazard that we have when we put a camera on top of our head, um, I call this a bashing hazard, particularly when moving around in the aircraft, turning ourselves around. Be aware now that you've got this much on the front. Um, not to bash your mates in the face, or particularly if there are tandems on board as well. Um, I've seen plenty of people cop a camera to the face. Um, and another point of snag hazard is when we're exiting the aircraft. You've now got an extra this much on your head. Uh, so when we're climbing out of the aircraft, you're going to need to take that into account. Um, so two things. Number one, if you're exiting from outside the aircraft, be wary of how you climb out. Practice it on the ground. Do I need to put my head in a different position? Do I need to get lower in the door to avoid catching the camera on the way out? Secondly, if you're exiting from inside the aircraft, particularly with a dive exit, be very wary, again, of this extra height. We've seen plenty of people launching themselves out of the aircraft and either taking the camera clean off their helmet, or if you've got a nice rigid mount like this um, that hopefully won't break, getting a nice clonk on the head as they go out. Um, so be aware of that. Again, practice your exit on the ground. Get your mates to look out for you. Um, also, when you first start jumping with the camera, it can be a big distraction. Um, so my advice to you is when you start getting within the aircraft and you get, say, a minute call or something like that, turn the camera on way ahead of time and forget about it. Forget that it's even there. All right? And as you get more experience with them, you can get more close with your timing, um, but we really don't want it to be a distraction or something you're thinking about on your first few jumps. A couple of extra tips to get the most out of your camera jumping. Um, make sure you've got the right angles for the type of jumps that you're doing. These roller mounts, you can use an Allen key to adjust the angle. Um, you can set it on the ground by having a look through the back screen, get one of your mates to help you, or obviously just review your footage. You may need to move it up or down slightly. Um, another tip just for myself personally is um, run your camera for free fall, turn it off, and then run it again for canopy if you want. It just makes your file size much smaller, much easier to sort through, uh, and naming files and things like that. Go have fun.